Hey you guys. So today's video is going to be all about, I guess we're going to call this the burden of social media influence, kind of what you're signing yourself up for, um, what the rise might look like and how, if you're not careful, you might be architecting a little bit of self-destruction and be very vulnerable to having a social media train wreck. I've been talking a little bit about the beauty industry and kind of, I don't know, I, I think some people are getting the wrong idea that I'm being negative. I keep seeing that a lot. I'm not being negative. If you believe that a difference of opinion or a different perspective of something is negativity, there's a very special section in this video for you. Stay tuned, you'll have to see. But overall, I'm just trying to present another side to the story, I guess you could say. Another vantage point to see things through. Some food for thought. What you do this information is totally up to you. Before we get started, make sure you're subscribed if you are not. Check the down bar for links to all my social media platforms. And if I did not mention it, this is a chit chat get ready with me video. So I'm gonna have a naked face in three, two, one. So I just wanna say that like the tone of this video is not gonna be in the service of trying to like pull receipts. I don't really care to get into like whose side I'm on. I don't want this to be a drama video. I feel like this is more like just kind of an, an analysis, if you will. But I do want to start off by saying that I am actually kind of worried for some of the figures involved in what's going on right now. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Warranted or not, and yes, definitely certain things right now are stacked up the way that they are for a reason. You know, I just hope that everyone is okay and that things don't go too far, if you know what I mean. I just think that's an energy we need to kind of keep present right now. Um, the people involved in any given situation like this are real people. It just, it just kind of keeps getting worse. And for anyone who's like, well, like, they put themselves in the public eye, so they've opened themselves up for scrutiny. You would in a sense, and in some ways, be very right about that, and that's exactly what I wanna talk about. Like, you can't have it both ways. You can't really have your hand out, taking cash, getting product deals, you know, selling merch to kids, you know, taking all these subs, and then also acting like you're totally victimized by your own popularity. You know, when it turns from something that's beneficial to you to something that's a little bit more sinister. The pendulum almost always swings the other way at some point. And like the most that anyone can hope for is that it's kind of like a gentle nudge as opposed to like a tsunami. With influencers and particularly like super young ones, I just don't know how prepared at all they actually are for what they're signing up for when they start their social media journey. And hear me out, I'm not saying that all of the younger generation or teens or kids or whatever are stupid or immature because I feel like these young kids nowadays are a lot more like savvy and in some ways more sophisticated than I certainly was at that age. And that's because they literally have the world at their fingertips. and. They just don't have that kind of sheltered upbringing or existence that some of us probably had when we were younger. Having information about something and being cognizantly aware of something is just not the same thing because you just don't have the maturity or the experience to conceptualize certain things quite yet. And it's not their fault, it just is what it is. The barrier to fame or to become famous, I should say, is just not what it used to be at all. In the old days, you used to have to kind of like hone and perfect some sort of skill set, and then you would go through various forms of rejection. You would have to move through the proper channels in order to be put in front of the right people that would help you with your career and usually because of a vested interest or financial stake in the success of your career, you usually would kind of have like some sort of handlers, if you will, and they would help you deal with the fame and kind of manage it. So, you know, by the time you get from point A to point B, you have most likely developed a very healthy respect for the position that you have, the industry that you're in, and kind of what goes into um, achieving success and therefore maintaining success as well. 
And to be clear, I am not implying that reaching celebrity status in social media is not a difficult thing to do. It does take a lot of work and the competition is it's stiff. There's some stiff competition out there. But the crazy thing about it is, is you can be chasing your tail, working your ass off on your content for a hot minute, and then just like post one video that does really well, and boom, like you're famous. Sometimes it's slow, and sometimes it's just like here one day, and it wasn't here the day before. Interesting thing about social media fame is what it's built on, which kind of brings me to my next point about how I feel like all of this kind of goes down. Sometimes I don't think that anyone involved in this, whether it's the viewer or the content creator, really are cognizantly aware of the fact that the people on the other side of the screen are real. You know what I mean? So not just the viewers not keeping it in their front brain that the people they're watching are real. Sometimes I don't think that influencers are like super aware of the fact that they're being watched by real people too. Because if they did, I kind of feel like a lot of the creators in question would keep in mind that people are fickle. There's a quote that I really love. Um, it goes, the same crowd that will applaud your coronation are the same crowd that will applaud your beheading because people love a show. But I definitely feel like in some cases there are just creators who have completely lost touch with their audience and like they don't seem to really understand or be aware of that. You guys ever see that movie Coraline before? It's one of my favorite movies in the entire world. But in it, Coraline is a young girl. Her day-to-day -day life and the way things are are just like a little drab, a little dull, a little mundane, but it's real, like no matter which way you slice it, it's real life. And then Coraline goes through a little door, it ends up in a world very similar to hers, but there everything is just like fantastical and brightly colored and there's like entire musical numbers written about her. It's just exactly the type of life that she wants to lead. In this new world, there's people and they're pretty much exactly like the people that she knows in real life, except not really. No, but they are in fact soulless, calculating, and they have shiny black buttons for eyes. And to me, social media land is kind of like that sometimes. You know, it's something that we can conceptualize in theory because it looks like something that we know. We see what looks like real people doing real things, making real friends, falling in real love, of having real problems, yet it's all just a little bit more technicolor, and glamorous, and shiny and glossy. And like with Coraline's magical world, we don't really know what's going on with the people that are there. You know, like what's behind the buttons? You know what I'm saying? Sometimes it seems like there are some influencers out there who literally just see their followers as like numbers on a screen and not digesting the fact that literally every single number um, represents an actual person. Some are just waiting for your downfall. I mean, that's true even in real life. Once you get to a certain place in your life, you can kind of look back and just be like, some of y'all were just shady from the word go, just sneakity, sneakity snakes in the grass. Another thing that kind of strikes me as weird is like when influencers kind of get into this weird like subscriber flex thing, they'll say things like, oh, well, this person's only saying that because they want subscribers. Or they'll say like, who even are you? Like how many subscribers do you even have? I don't know why that's the voice that I imagine when I think about this type of a situation, but it is either way, so here we are. Why is this drying so fast? Oh my God, it's like I'm gonna race for my life, ooh. But anyway, so yeah, when they do that, they have that kind of like a, like a Scooby-Doo brawl over Twitter about who has more subscribers. Honestly, when I see that, I'm just like, I'm out. I can't take you seriously anymore because what it says to me is that the individual who is saying that, you know, the people who are like, oh, you're only doing this for subscribers. They're probably saying that because everything that they see in the world now is done through the lens of like algorithms and followers. So everything is perfumed with that. Now, obviously there are people out there who will clout chase and da 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 da, but it's very gaslighty to me whenever, let's say there's an influencer and somebody comes out and says something, we'll say for the sake of argument in this case, it's true with evidence to support it. The influencer in question will just try to minimize it by saying, 
you just want subscribers, you just want followers, that's why you're doing this. Like, that can't be true every single time, my man. Like, sorry. You know, and this goes hand in hand with kind of like, as someone on social media, because I don't like consider myself an influencer. I don't know why I keep pulling that voice, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's really easy to kind of like get high on your own supply. Are you crazy, Montana? Are you crazy? That's real. And I kind of understand it because sometimes that happens with even me. Like, so recently I had a video do pretty well. Like at least as far as my channel goes, you know, I have a little under 80,000 subscribers and I had a video recently hit 50,000 views in the span of like two weeks. That's pretty decent in terms of um, subscriber to viewership ratio, if you will. And as a result of that, I started getting a lot more comments per that video than I was used to. But yeah, like if you see enough comments every day of people just being like, oh, you're beautiful, you're smart, you're hilarious, you're amazing, I love you. Also, thanks all you new guys who liked and subscribed and are hanging out with me now. Hey girl, hey. You know, I was kind of feeling myself there. And so Karen from Nowheresville, Rhode Island shows up with her perma stank and pops my little pink bubble of I'm the shit. I'm sorry I said it was six things when it was actually five, Karen. You guys know what I'm talking about. I miscounted in my last video. I was like, there's six things, but there's actually five. And people are not letting it slide. Most people are chill about it, but some people will be like, you're a liar. You even said in this video it was six things and now it's actually five. Like, delete. Okay, bye. <laughs> I bring this up to say like, imagine a world where from sun up to sun down, you just have people constantly telling you how incredible you are. And then, you know, you start seeing booming sales from products with your name on it to include merch. I'm gonna tell y'all something. I'm not a merch person. Let me begin by saying that. So I might not be the target demographic here anyway. Like I've been a Deftones fan since 2001 and I don't own a single Deftones t-shirt. Like it's bananas to me that people buy YouTuber merch, but they do. So I'd imagine if you were seeing people like buying things with your likeness on them, I can see how that would get in your head a little bit. And then you might, especially if you are only at a certain maturity level, kind of just get to a place where you're like, nobody can tell me shit. You know what I'm saying? Now, obviously you will get hate comments. I am much smaller than a lot of these, these people I'm kind of referring to and I still get them. But depending on who you are, and once again, your maturity level, you might internalize these comments as haters and nothing more. You know, no matter the subject they are commenting on, no matter who says it or how often you're hearing it, regardless of obvious morality issues that your behavior or actions or words might be bringing up, you're just constantly with your fingers in your ears, eyes closed, la 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 la, can't hear any of it. There's nuance. I am not saying everyone is like this. We are talking about the anatomy of a social media train wreck, how they get from the top of the pile to the bottom of the heap. These are the kind of the things that go into it. So, okay, now you're in a situation where you have tons of followers and everybody is telling you that you're the best thing since sliced bread and you've gotten to a point where you're literally not taking any negativity under advisement whatsoever. And a lot of times I do feel like some influencers will, it's almost like gaslighting where if anyone disagrees with them or doesn't like what they're doing, it's negativity. Could you imagine in real life if that's something that happened, if like your best friend or your sister or your mom or your husband or whatever came up to you and they're like, listen, if you're gonna borrow my car, you need to fill it up with gas. And you are just like, I will not stand for this negativity. Like there is a fine line between like negativity and calling you on your shit, which we'll get into in a second. All right. so you you are in the no hate zone. You know, as far as you're concerned, your farts smell like cinnamon rolls. You are just, your, your ego is ballooning a little bit. Next, you might also be surrounding yourself with the types of people who are also stands or financially benefiting from your position in some way. They could be riding your coattails. Like you're just hearing a lot of yes around you or actually yes. Side note, should you ever find yourself in a situation with a person who simply cannot, cannot 
tolerate other people having a difference of opinion and to put like a finer point on it, cannot stand being called on their shit, or even worse, discards people from their lives when they're being called on their, you know, run. It's not normal. It's very symptomatic of toxic behavior. None of us are perfect. Like if you are not willing to hear what people have to say to you, it means you're just kind of living in your own world. And I just don't trust people like that. They have no moral compass. It's all about them. Um, I need everyone to hold that thought because I'm gonna turn the camera off and do lashes, liner, mascara, all that good stuff. And then I'll come back and we will pick up where we left off. So as I was like finishing up doing my lashes and liner, I just started doing my foundation and was like, oh snap, I gotta turn the computer, or the computer, the camera back on. So in the case of the hypothetical YouTuber we've been talking about, because I can't really remember where I left off, but I think what I was saying. So at this point in your journey, of this fictitious YouTuber I'm telling the story about. You're probably making some pretty poor choices and you're probably doing it regularly enough um, that it's being noticed by outside people, you know, followers, not followers. And especially now that we're seeing how many, and I brought this up recently in another video, there's just clearly some people in the industry now who are really riding the drama train all the way to success. And that's one way to do what you're doing. But there are definitely a lot of gurus and people on social media who are wildly successful without doing that. I'm looking at you, Desi Perkins. And yet there are still plenty who got where they are now, continue to stay relevant because of Twitter wars and drama channel coverage. Truly the worst case scenario I think would be for your entire career to jump off from that. You need to be very aware of what you're doing that gets you subscribers or followers or whatever. You know, they subbed because you did something they want to see more of. Now you gotta give it to them or they might not watch. But anyway, these people are surrounded by yes men. They're wildly successful. They're probably not very in touch at all with the validity behind any hate comments that they're getting. So at this point, the machine's kind of moving and shaking. Like they're not aware of it, but the train's headed down the tracks now. And then the day will come when you step on the wrong toes, or you tweet and delete the wrong thing. Whatever the case may be, things are gonna kind of start coming downstream for you. Cause think about it, if you're building a career, or at least, you know, happily trying to reap the benefit of scandals, of like bratty, controversial behavior for the sake of being bratty and controversial. That's probably the exact thing in the exact way you're gonna get taken down, you know what I mean? Have you ever heard that expression that a relationship with someone will usually end the same way that it began? I don't really think there's a whole lot of exceptions to that rule and I certainly don't think if you're in a relationship with millions of people, that there's an exception to that rule. And a lot of this kind of brings me back to one of my initial points. Like the milestone, the milestone, sometimes my Southern accent is just like, it cannot be reasoned with. It's coming out one way or the other. The milestones that you are celebrating and the metrics that you are providing to brands for your rate sheet, like they represent actual people. And like, what did I say in the beginning of the video? People are fickle. People People have a breaking point. People kind of get tired of the same shtick over and over again. People love a show. The second that you start to believe that the people will just follow you blindly no matter what you do, like you're already in hot water. I look so pale right now, I cannot wait to bronze. I mean, some careers survive this and some careers don't. But like I said, you know, all this stuff usually has been building for a while. I don't know if I've seen personally any like social media or so even celebrity scandals, you know, something happens that's really controversial or crazy and the audience in general is like, say what now? It's usually been signs for a little bit that something was coming. So I guess the big question is, or one of the big questions is, what can we learn from this? Most of us are probably in a situation where we would never have to worry about our screw ups 
having to be played out on a stage this big. You won't have a days long media blitz blowout. You're not gonna have millions of people declaring their distaste for you. You're not gonna have to worry about brand endorsement deals. Like I understand in a lot of ways you can watch something like this and feel like it's a problem or a situation you can't identify with or relate to. And in a lot of cases, probably don't have any sympathy for people involved in it because it just doesn't compute. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not anything you'll probably ever have to experience if you're lucky. But that doesn't mean that similar things in a similar way on a much smaller scale don't happen to us in our real life. So I turned the camera off and, um, changed my shirt and did my lips because I can't talk while I do my lips anyway. As I was saying, do you guys know what fruden, frudenschau, frudenschau, I can't say it. You know what that word refers to? Kind of that like feeling you get when you're watching other people's misfortune or scandals and you kind of get to just sit back and be like, hmm, like kind of what we all do with drama breaks out. We just kind of like to sit back and watch it unfold. Some of us are just full blown Marie Kondo when it comes to this kind of stuff. Like we love mess, you know what I'm saying? We as individuals in our everyday life are just not immune to this kind of thing happening to us. And it builds slowly over time for the, for the most part, you know? There's something to be said for those times in our lives where we just have one big mess up out of the blue. But for most of us that have ever been through a really hard time that we were kind of the center of, it was a bunch of little things we were getting away with over time, if that makes any sense. And then just one day, you know, the, the roosters are coming home to roost. <laughs> Fame is not something that could ever fix what is already broken inside of you. And neither will that promotion that you're up for. Or the married guy you're trying to pull away from his family. Or the Fendi purse collection that you're building up at the expense of your own financial health. Like you can make moves and ignore problems and step on toes to get what you want. And like, trust me, I speak from experience. There are times in my life that I was just not looking at the writing on the wall. Like we've all made mistakes. We're all just kind of blinded by one thing and we're not paying attention to everything over here. And it just, it catches up to you, man. But you gotta think about it like this. Like what's gonna happen when you get that thing you're after finally, whether it's fame, your Fendi purse collection or some Mary dude or some promotion. Like, are you gonna be like a dog chasing a car? Like, do you know what you're gonna do when you actually have it? Or will you just come up with some other material or external thing that you just need to have to make you feel whole? Are you assessing the links that you're willing to go to to get what you want? Are you paying attention to the people that you're hurting along the way? Am I gonna keep asking questions from the rest of this video? There is something to be said for ambition and goals and plans, but things that are not hard won are genuinely and generally not appreciated the way that they should be. I mean, that's just one of those facts that your mama told you and your mama's mama told her because it's true. If you don't have like a full blown respect for the things that you want or the people that help you get there or, or at the very least are keeping a very close watch on the actual important things in life, your train wreck will probably be coming as well. All right, I hope you guys are having an amazing day. That is the end of this video. I will try to link as many products as I can in the description box down below. Make sure you are subscribed if you are not and don't forget to come follow me on Instagram and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.